Let's face it, you only love him because he's the main character. I love you, Barry. Can you say it again? Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now! Barry recently finished its four season run with all the critical acclaim it's due. The HBO series, the good HBO, not the streaming one, followed character Barry Berkman. Berkman is a freelance hitman and former Marine. Finding himself in a depressive episode, Barry tries to make a change and break into acting. So he's like me if instead of being a former assassin, he was a former IT guy. The part about sadly playing Xbox is the same though. The series quickly grows far beyond that premise and turns into a commentary on the cycle of abuse, the nature of evil, and the exploitation of the entertainment industry. It's a show that says a lot, but perhaps its most profound statement is on the nature of idolization and the truth it so often hides. Throughout the series, the central characters try to present themselves as things they are not. They create idols of themselves and others as people who are braver, stronger, more successful, and more moral. And no character embodies this more than Barry himself. Each of us is more than the worst thing we've ever done. I'm a cop killer. If I saw you walking down the street, I'd kill you, I'd kill your kids, I'd kill your wife, and I'd kill your mom. Firstly, what do I mean by idolization? Well, at the risk of this video becoming some sort of pseudo-professorial lecture, which it now is, haha, <laughs> got you suckers. Down in the back, look at me, mom, I'm folding ideas. Idolization in this case is simply the individual or cultural act of taking a real person and elevating them to a venerated or even mythological figure. George Washington may have been a slave owner, but he's also the father of America. And maybe more than a few cloud-based steampunk cities as well. Hallelujah. It happens all the time. Even now, Keanu Reeves is held up as the internet's patron saint of genuineness. But he's still a person who presumably has flaws like the rest of us. That is, unless he actually is some kind of Highlander. However, what happens when the truth and the idol conflict so heavily? Barry, as a character, is evil very evil. In fact, he might be one of the most evil television characters ever created. There is very little redeeming about him, and even less to admire. Normally this isn't the kind of character that would end up being idolized by viewing audiences, but, I mean, historically... And here we go. Yeah, so even the worst characters imaginable have been turned into bedroom posters, action figures, and cameo appearances in Looney Tunes films. It's not hard to see why. Even if the Joker is a violent psychopath, he still wants to fight the system, man. Walter White might have turned into a brutal criminal, but we can empathize with his reasons. Plus, he still gets to machine gun a bunch of Nazis and die a rad death. Barry feels like a character specifically created as an argument against this kind of glorification. On the surface, it seems like he could sit comfortably amongst the anti-heroes of old. He is a trained killer who over the course of the series racks up a body count on par with John Rambo. At several points, he defeats the bad guy and wins the day. However, are these victories what we think they are? One of his defining badass moments comes when he goes on a screaming rampage through a house full of Chechen killers. It's the sort of scene that's been done before, usually portrayed as a strong moment of triumph. A good example comes from another HBO series, Boardwalk Empire. In that series, damaged assassin Richard Harrow storms a similar home. In his case, to rescue a young boy he has grown to care for. It's an unadulterated moment of triumph for the character. For Barry, however, it's more akin to an alcoholic falling off the wagon. The key differences are who and why. Barry isn't just offing a house full of bad guys. These are the men that he trained over the course of the season. At the start of the season, Barry is repaying Hank by training his men in combat. They spend several scenes learning from him in the middle of the desert. 
It doesn't take long before all these men, especially young Merbeck, see Barry as a sort of father figure. They even present him with a collective token of affection when he finishes the job. Barry, on the other hand, couldn't give two shits about these idiots. He's constantly berating them, dismissing them, and very clearly acting like he doesn't want to be there. He accepts their token with as much affection as a man getting a two-for-one coupon on heavy pulp OJ. In a moment full of deep foreshadowing, he even fires a gun next to Mayor Beck's face. Need some game? Need some game? Huh? You lose your focus, you give the other guy a chance to fire, you're dead! Trying to teach the man a lesson he will clearly fail to learn. When Barry is going room to room obliterating his friends and colleagues, Merbeck is waiting with a rifle trained at the door. However, when he sees that it's his mentor and idol, he hesitates and even smiles. Barry doesn't care. He never cared. <laughs> Do not idolize Barry. It'll get you killed. There is also the reason why Barry is attacking the compound. It's not a rescue mission, but one of petty revenge. Fuchs, Barry's longtime mentor and mental abuser, is at the house. Barry is finally tipped over into murderous rage towards his wannabe dad because Fuchs messed with Barry's idol, Gene Cousinow. Gene is a failed actor whose career amounts to a bunch of side roles in some cheesy sounding films. He runs an acting class that is more like an active scam. My class is not cheap. Well, it's not a problem. You pay in cash. Yeah. You pay in advance. I can do that. It's a class where his main teaching technique comes from the Kubrick Duval dynamic. Yet by the end of season two, Barry has placed Gene on his own pedestal. To Barry, Gene is the man that gave him a shot at a new life, one without violence. He has a huge admiration for the failed actor, despite the fact that he also killed Gene's one true love at the end of season one. So Barry's rampage is for entirely selfish reasons. The damage is already done. He's not rescuing Gene. Fuchs has even said that he's now leaving Barry's life forever. Barry just wants to unload his rage and clip into Fuchs. And he doesn't care who stands in the way. And what about Barry himself? There are those who idolize him as well. There's a phrase that's repeated often throughout the show and one filled with meaning. Barry is a nice guy. My boyfriend, Barry, uh, thank you for being an amazing boyfriend who support and sustain me. Different characters express this sentiment and they all have their own reasons for saying it. At first, it really looks like Barry is a nice guy. He's polite, quiet, groomed, and a receptive listener. Or as I just said, that's what it looks like. If the first two seasons do any work in building Barry up as a likable character, then the last two seasons methodically destroy every reason you have for thinking he's a good person. Do you think Barry is a caring boyfriend? Well, actually, he's verbally, physically, and mentally abusive. Well, he is dedicated to changing his ways. Nope, now he's back to killing for money even when he doesn't have to. I thought you said you wanted to watch him suffer. He's asked for my forgiveness. You're forgiving, Jeff. I think I just overreacted. There's no forgiving Jeff! Post season two, he resorts to violence immediately in almost every situation. Fuchs rounds up a literal posse of Barry's collateral damage, and he ends up in a full-blown bike chase because of it. He is also investigated by a former veteran and friend. He lets Barry go, even though he finds him disposing of a body. How could he not help the guy who he spent the last decade building up in his head as the man responsible for the existence of his own family? I mean, it's not like Barry also shot an innocent bystander in cold blood during that very same ambush. Barry is also a pathetic moral coward. He consistently refuses to turn himself in for his crimes, even when the consequences continue to escalate. Whenever he is confronted with his crimes, he turns into a blubbering shell of a man. Shut up! Shut up! I'm so sorry. From the moment he shoots Detective Moss, it's very clear that there is no one he won't kill to protect himself. Towards the end of the series, Barry becomes a pseudo born again normcore extremist. However, even this is a facade as he just uses the word of God to justify his own impulses. 
He even switches to a more hard right radio preacher because of the whole do not kill commandment. The act of killing another person that's pretty generally considered a sin, but it's a little more complicated than that because the Old Testament tells us that there are sanctioned killings in the eyes of God. Exactly. It's only in his last moments, when it's cost him literally everything, does he say he will turn himself in. Too little too late though because Genie got a gun. Oh wow. The series ends with a flash forward. Well, another one at least. In the coda, we see Barry's now teenage son watching the biopic slash crime thriller about his father's life. It starts cringingly kitsch, but then there's this dawning horror as we realize what this is. The movie is portraying Barry as the hero he wasn't. According to the film, he was an innocent veteran manipulated by an evil sociopath acting coach. He was framed for all the murders, especially Detective Mosses. He heroically rescued his family from international criminals, which in actuality was an event he was mostly late for. He even dies a noble and tragic death, double-crossed by Gene Cousinow, who was covering up his own crimes. Gene, by the way, is now serving life in prison. The horror comes from the realization that this movie, however inaccurate, is the story of record. Barry will forever be remembered as a tragic hero, and not the pure evil psychopath he was. Tragically of all, it's his son who's going to remember him this way the most. Barry's son isn't the only one to idolize Barry over the course of the show. In fact, his biggest fan would be Noho Hank. Hank seems to fall in love with Barry from the moment they meet. Over the course of the show, Hank tries to kill Barry multiple times. However, even this doesn't quell his love of the hired killer. By the end of the series, Barry has caused Hank untold pain. And yet, you still get the feeling he wishes they could be friends. Hank's end is also a clear metaphor for his misplaced idolization. In a final confrontation with Fuchs, the situation escalates into a bloody gunfight slash grenade fight. Hank is mortally wounded and passes away. He dies grasping the hand of a literal golden idol molded after the man whose death he sanctioned. A man who was the love of his life. The confrontation also only happens because Fuchs pushes Hank on his story about Cristobal's death. Hank has been telling people that his boyfriend was killed by his enemies. In actuality, Hank allowed his own people to kill Cristobal because he refused to join them. The lie is easier than the truth and he has convinced himself Crystal Ball died a tragically noble death. It's the destruction of his idol that kills Hank. The bullets just finished the job. Sally Reed is another important character when it comes to the exploration of idolization. She is an aspiring actress who works her way up from bit parts as alien moms to a showrunner and lead. However, this advancement only happens because she's a dirty liar. When given the opportunity to talk about the reality of her formerly abusive husband, she chooses the easier lie over the more complex truth. She imagines a scenario where she defiantly stood up to him, as opposed to the truth where she snuck away in the night. She is ashamed of her choice at first, until she is rewarded for this behavior in a scene that is a direct parallel to the time Barry was praised for first killing a man. There is also a young actress who idolizes Sally. However, we see her illusion shattered when she is confronted with the reality of who her idol actually is. Barry himself also idolizes Sally from the moment he meets her. He believes that she is the key to his redemption. Sally, I'm a piece of shit. You gave me your life. I don't deserve. You were so loving to me. And you made me feel like a human. I see Do it! very upset right now. However, they never seem to actually be happy when they're together. Sally treats Barry like an accessory to her public image. She has him show up while she's filming just so she can say she's too busy to go to lunch with him. I'm sure there are people who will idolize Barry in real life. There are probably people watching this video who think he's just the coolest. However, it's pretty clear that Bill Hader thinks he's despicable. While talking about his love of the film Clockwork Orange, Hader talked about a friend who disliked the movie because of the way fans had idolized its lead's actions. But I had a friend say, but what bothers me about that film was that it became pop culture and that people would dress up like Droogs. Mm. They're you know, <laughs> like yeah, they're monsters. Yeah. And I went, 
You know what? That's a very good point. That I could understand if you go and watch that film and you go, I hate that when you go into, yeah. you know, yeah. people have posters of Alex on their wall and shit. And it's like, yeah. you know, and I, I said, I can understand why you wouldn't like that film based on that. Barry feels like a response to this sentiment. Barry and the rest of the creative team set out to create a character that was impossible to idolize and to show about the dangers of doing just that. We are all guilty of this very act, by the way. I mean, just ask 13-year-old me how cool he thought Tyler Durden was. Think of a real person you idolize, your childhood hero even. Be honest and ask yourself, do they deserve to be seen as a flawless hero? Does anyone? Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can check out more of my work on my personal channel, That's the Space Station, which is linked below. To everyone here, thank you so much for having me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to show your appreciation. As always, remember, stay safe and be who you are.